Hey everybody. So our phones are listening to us. We all know that. And uh, I was on the site that I normally buy our video equipment from and they were like, Oh, you know what you should buy is this thing. Um, and it is an air purifier. And it was so interesting that I just wanted to make a quick video so that I could maybe help somebody out there to not buy this or anything like it. Uh, because it's sold as kind of a silver bullet. And this is the difference between scientists and marketing people. The marketing people are the ones that are the last people before a product leaves and goes out the door and starts being used by normal people. And they sometimes twist what the thing is designed to do. And so this thing is called the Air Free Lotus. It says mold and bacteria destroying filterless air purifier with a nightlight. Very nice. Uh, it is pretty. And you can see, you know, from the images here, that's, that's very nice. But uh, filterless should be a really big uh, giveaway that this is something that you probably don't want to have anything to do with. As stated on Home Diagnosis, our show on PBS, from world-class researchers, the filters are great. HEPA filtration, amazing. It can remove 99.99% or 99.97% of all of the uh, particles in the air, essentially down to 0.3 microns, but then it's easier to grab things that are smaller than 0.3 microns. So those are very, very tiny. Those are the things that are bad for us because they get breathed in by our children and our people who are sick or pregnant in our homes. And then that might go directly into their bloodstream. So something that is not filtering, but is somehow destroying and destroying is another key word that you really want to be careful about is something that you should definitely be very cautious about. Now, here's the thing. This exclusive filterless technology, you can see that um, the contaminated air enters air free at the bottom. Air free boils the air, uh, destroying all microorganisms. And then sterilized air is cooled down and released back into the room. Now this boiling is 400 degrees inside of this. So essentially what you've got sitting in your living room right now, if you are using this is a tiny oven. And that is very nice and is interesting from a science perspective. When we talk about the science of homes on this channel or on home diagnosis, like super cool. I like the idea of using heat to sterilize things and not a UV light because UV lights, as you may see on this channel, have their own special problems, specifically creating ozone. This one probably does not create ozone. They actually say that it reduces ozone. I would, I'm, I want to dig further into that before we even scratch that. But the uh, silent and maintenance free operation then is kind of like another part of what they're selling you. And the thing about it is that this is being sold for up to 650 square feet, as you can see right here. Now, just a quick, let's start doing some math to try and assess what this is doing. 650 square feet with an eight foot ceiling, because of course, square foot times the ceiling height is going to give us a three dimensional shape of the air in the, in the room, 650 square feet, eight foot ceiling, 5,200 cubic feet of air. What I always do with my clients to start with is divide the volume of air that they're talking about by 60 minutes. And that gives you the CFM cubic feet per minute that you need to clean. If you were going to do one cleaning per hour, that number for this size room is about 87 CFM. There is no way that this perfectly silent machine is moving 87 CFM. 87 CFM is a, an upsized bathroom fan. And you know what a normal bathroom fan sounds like. So getting one that's going to be 90 CFM to be perfectly silent when you're sitting right next to it, that's going to take some doing. In fact, you find out if you start digging a little further into this, that there is no fan in this. Um, so the contaminated air enters the air free unit by natural air convection. So the heat alone is all that this is doing. You will be heating up the room as you do this. So if you're in a hot room, think about that before you use it. But also this natural convection can't possibly pull 90 CFM either. And so what we're looking at probably here when they say this is recommended for rooms up to 650 square feet is maybe that it kills all of the things floating around in the air every hour. But here's the other thing. The fact that it has no filter in it actually means that you're going to be uh, killing lots of things that are floating around the air. And I do not, I'm not going to argue about whether there are viruses in the air and COVID, uh, you know, and the pandemic is still 
a big concern for a lot of places in the world. Um, yes, but there's always two sides to an equation. So let's say that we kill all these things in the air, whatever they are, viruses, bacteria, other kinds of microbes. What is the other side of the equation, which is the side effects of doing that? This, the side effect is that now we have not filtered out their tiny little corpses. So you have now millions of tiny little corpses floating around in the air, and those are now food for more microbes. So it is possible, just using common sense, to think that this actually would be kind of a zero-sum game on microbe control as well, because you're creating a lot more dust, this decaying dead matter in the room since you're not filtering it. I don't know why somebody is mad at filters, but all air purifiers should have a filter in it. And in fact, if they have any extra electronics like a heater, you should just go ahead and disable those and just use the filter. In fact, let's talk about cooking for a minute because this is a filter that is going to catch splatter from cooking things like bacon, for example, which I really don't like to cook inside my house. That's back deck material if I can help it. But a filter is not a bad thing. This is what we use to catch the big blobby particles that are coming out of the uh, pan when you cook things. The things that are in that pan are dead if they're 400 degrees. So yes, it does kill things, but then it is very important also to capture them either here or with an exhaust hood over your kitchen uh, cooktop that then is going to spray them outside because cooking creates lots and lots of tiny particles. Essentially, the thing to remember is that everything in life is coated with a very thin layer of oil. And when you heat up a surface like this one does to 400 degrees, it is going to evaporate those bits of things and they go into the air as tiny, tiny particles. And these are things that are so small that they're not going to actually be counted by a particle counter if you have one that's a consumer uh, particle counter for a couple hundred bucks. They're not actually counting particles, they're weighing particles. And so big particles get a lot more attention from those types of monitors than the tiny ones do. And the tiny ones are generally a lot worse for us. So just like you're going to use this, use your HEPA filter, use your filtration system in your central HVAC if you have one, or a room by room air filtration system is going to be very handy. So I just wanted to make sure that this was clear to people because there are hundreds and potentially thousands of devices that are being sold to us on Instagram and YouTube and on our, you know, wherever you go. H your HVAC professional right now, if they're at the supply shop, is being sold things to install onto your central HVAC system. So you just need to be careful as we're moving through this because you do not want to be creating more chemistry at home because there are all kinds of unintended byproducts to that. So please feel free to comment below if you have questions or comments about other things that you've found that are devices that seem to save the world, but they actually probably have a whole bunch of other side effects because this scientific conversation is very important to all of us since we all live in homes. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time. <laughs>